Uh, good afternoon, and welcome to today's announcement and, and political discussion. My name is Colm O'Murhertig. I'm the uh, Dean of the Harris School of Public Policy here at the University of Chicago. Uh, before our panel uh, today, we do want to uh, make an announcement of an important initiative here at the university that benefits the whole university. And we uh, would like your indulgence when we go through this process uh, in advance of the panel. There will be maybe 15 or 20 minutes in making the announcement, followed by 10 minutes of questions. These questions will be confined to members of the media. Uh, after that, we will transition to the panel itself, and there will be an opportunity for questions from real people uh, after, the, <laughs> uh, after the panel. Uh, we're delighted to have a stellar panel here today. George Stephanopoulos, David Brooks, Alex Castellanos, Rachel Maddow, and Mayor Rahm Emanuel will be here, and we're all looking forward to that discussion. Uh, but before we come to the panel, I would like to, uh, to introduce uh, this announcement, which will, I think, energize the whole university, in particular, the college uh, and the Harris School. Uh, for those who don't know, the Harris School uh, was set up in 1987 and is named for Irving B. Harris, uh, who was a visionary Chicago businessman who thought that policy would be enriched by bringing evidence to bear on it and the training people to be leaders in policy would be uh, a noble ambition for the university and that's one that we are trying to fulfill at the school. Uh, I would like to, to mention that we're delighted to have Joan Harris here today. We appreciate her continuing support of the school and of the university as a whole. Uh, I mentioned that we at the Harris School are engaged in a partnership with the college and among the things in which we're interested uh, are bringing bright, young, energetic people into the public sphere. So our interest is in career training for these students and also for inspiring them to believe that this is the best way in which they should spend their lives. And I think today's announcement will contribute considerably to that goal. And to make the announcement, I would now like to introduce the president of the University of Chicago, uh, Robert J. Zimmer. Uh, thank you very much, Colm, and uh, welcome to all of you uh, to the University of Chicago, and thank you so much for being here this afternoon. Uh, so today it's my pleasure to formally announce the establishment of the Institute of Politics at the University of Chicago, uh, directed by nationally renowned political strategist and University of Chicago college alum, David Axelrod. The University of Chicago has, of course, been known since its inception as an institution offering a particularly rigorous, intense, and analytic education. Uh, the education has naturally evolved over the years, but these particular qualities of rigor, intensity, and analysis uh, have always remained. In recent years, particularly in the undergraduate college, we've placed a great deal of emphasis on extracurricular preparation of students, connecting their education to the opportunities that they will find professionally in the future. Many of our students are interested in careers in public service and politics. The Institute of Politics that David Axelrod will direct is intended to provide a dramatically increased set of experiences for students with these interests, develop their understanding of opportunities, and increase their capacity for careers in politics or public service more broadly. The Institute of Politics will be a nonpartisan endeavor reinforcing the university's culture of open debate that includes multiple and often competing perspectives. And to this end, the institute will offer an intellectual destination for students, scholars, and leaders who will bring with them a broad spectrum of political beliefs and experiences. The institute will work particularly closely, not only with the college, but as you just heard from Colm, with the Harris School of Public Policy Studies. The Institute will begin operation in January 2013 with a focus on three main activities, a series of visiting fellows, including leading policy practitioners who can share their insights with students and faculty members, an expansion of internships in the field of public service and politics uh, based on Chicago's um, on the college's successful Je Jeff Metcalf Fellows Program and a series of public speakers that will bring 
prominent political leaders and commentators to the university. The panel discussion that will immediately follow this announcement and this press conference is indicative of the range of political perspectives that the Institute will bring together. Uh, the Institute uh, will carry on in a new important way a spirit of public service that has long been a feature of University of Chicago alumni. Among our alumni and others associated with the university are some of this nation's uh, most noted political leaders and public servants of the last century and certainly of this century. Uh, and indeed, this is the case for alumni, not only in the United States, but around the world as well. Uh, I'm proud to say that this collection of people includes David Axelrod, who studied political science here in the 1970s. David, as many of you know, is passionate about the possibilities that this institute brings, especially the chance to help students who share his love of and commitment to politics and public service. We are very eager to see him here directing the Institute for Politics in 2013 and share his passion in helping students understand and experience how the distinctive education that they have at the University of Chicago can be connected to a life of public service. Uh, I do want to express my appreciation both as president and express personally my appreciation uh, for David's imagination, energy, and commitment in making this institute a reality. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce the dean of the college, John Boyer. Uh, in his now almost 20 years as dean, uh, John has overseen a great and ongoing flourishing of the college. Uh, in particular, he has overseen as a very high priority uh, the creation of many career-oriented offerings to complement the college's preeminent academic program. Uh, this new institute, the Institute of Politics, will build upon these offerings, uh, adding to one of the college's many and increasing strengths. So please join me in welcoming John Boyer. Thank you very much, Bob. Um, as I uh, think about the, uh, the institute that David is founding and creating, I think it, uh, in some respects, uh, reaches back to our deepest roots, uh, going back to the university's founding. The mission of the new institute reaffirms, it seems to me, long-standing traditions of civic engagement that were fostered by the men and women who created this university in the 1890s and 1900s. Our founding president, William Rainey Harper, believe that universities had a crucial role to play in empowering talented young people to serve not only as effective citizens, but also if they chose as, effect, as efficacious civic leaders. Uh, that is, our founders believed that we were not only the custodians of past and present and future knowledge of past values, past ideals, but that we had a responsibility to help our students think about and to prepare themselves for the kind of future, the kind of city, the kind of nation uh, that we all wish to share and to live in. These virtues uh, uh, are, it seems to me, are and were evident in the public service achievements of our alumni. Uh, today we have uh, two distinguished alums on the panel, David Ax Axelrod and David Brooks. I'm also very grateful that we have a distinguished alumna in the room, uh, uh, Representative Barbara Flynn Curry. Uh, we also have thousands of alums across the nation who, have, who are actively working or, or who did work in government, all, all levels, civil service, NGOs, social service organizations, educational reform institutions, and other forms of civic engagement. But the Institute of Politics looks not simply to the past, but I think it will also provide a very important lever and fulcrum for the future. That is the, to say is that this institution holds great promise for our students who uh, wish to have career opportunities in public and social service. And um, in, in that sense, as Bob, uh, Zimmer has indicated, uh, the Institute builds upon a thriving effort of the university over the past decade to help our students equip themselves with the theoretical and practical ex expertise uh, in a wide variety of fields uh, in the public and social realm. Uh, in the past 20 years, we've created a, a large number of these non-curricular uh, pr uh, programs. That, that I think they're quite innovative uh, and uh, but we're actually now being much emulated across the country. The Jeff Metcalf Fellows Program, which Bob mentioned, began in 1997 with seven fellows, one of which I'm proud to say was in the mayor's office of the city of Chicago. And uh, we now have 450 paid internships uh, for college students across the country. 
um, a, a number that we're going to double in the next couple of years. We also have a program called Chicago Queers in Public and Social Service, which is directed by Dylan Siegler, who is also here today. Um, and this is one of eight career exploration programs sponsored by the college and by our University Office for Career Advising and Planning Services. And all of these programs are intended to give students the resources, the contacts, and the advising necessary to be able to pursue careers, uh, successful careers in public and social service or other important professional occupations. Many of our new initiatives have been quite naturally anchored in the, the city of Chicago, this great metropolis that has been the university's home for over 120 years. Chicago is an amazing city, a city that has been a uh, confluence of cultures and ethnicity, languages and religious values, cited far from the distractions of either coast and the boundary line of the great American West. It's a city that has given, uh, it has a personality of its own, a great resilience and determination, a pragmatic impatience for what was accomplished yesterday and yet a tolerance for diversity and difference. Chicago as a city has had a powerful role in shaping the course of American politics and in framing significant debates about American civic life more generally. And I think it's very appropriate that David Axelrod is creating this institute in this city at this time in the history of the university. Our, universe, our, our students benefit greatly from all of these pragmatic opportunities to uh, 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 work in and beyond Chicago. And the very large number of our students who want to pursue these kinds of opportunities suggest that this is an institute whose time is uh, not only come, but who will fill a very important mission. Uh, the institute is, not, uh, is, is therefore about both the future and the past. It's about our students' aspirations to engage the world, engage the world in Chicago, regionally, nationally, and around the world. But it's also, I believe, about our common values, values that have guided this university from the very start. It's now my very great privilege to introduce the next speaker, David Axelrod. David was born in New York City. Uh, he came to the University of Chicago in the 1970s, which was a time of great political transition, indeed of upheaval in Chicago and the nation at large. He graduated from the college in 1976, after which he took his place as a very important uh, and successful journalist uh, in Chicago, working for the Chicago Tribune. Uh, he left journalism uh, in 1984 to join the campaign of Senator Paul Simon, and after that became a leading political consultant in Chicago and nationwide. He was, as you know, a key strategist for the 2008 campaign uh, uh, for President Barack Obama and has served in the Obama administration as a senior advisor. David and his wife Susan have deep roots in Hyde Park, and he has said that this new role uh, will be something of a homecoming for him. I think we can all agree that this is a homecoming that is uh, an extraordinary win for the home team. Uh, we too are very privileged to welcome David home to Hyde Park. So please join me in welcoming David Axelrod. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I think the last time that I met with the dean here, it was about my grades, so this is, a, this is better. Uh, but I appreciate that warm introduction, uh, John, and uh, I appreciate the extraordinary reception I've gotten from everyone here uh, at the university. This began many months ago with a discussion between uh, uh, myself and, and, and Bob Zimmer uh, to share the idea uh, for this program, and from uh, the moment that that moment on, he uh, embraced it, he encouraged it, and as did everybody in the leadership of the university. And um, they've really championed this idea from the time that I raised it. I'm very grateful to uh, all of you for your encouragement and, and enthusiasm and your commitment. I also want to acknowledge uh, uh, an old friend and client who uh, couldn't be here today, Mayor Rich Daly, who I know is now affiliated with the university and sharing the benefit of his uh, great experience uh, with students uh, here. And I hope to be able to do some things with him uh, uh, while uh, I'm down here. Um, this is, in fact, a kind of an emotional homecoming for me. And it's uh, made all the more so as I look around the room and see uh, so many people, so many great friends and my family, people who played such a large role in my life, and I look out at you, and I, uh, and I am reminded just how blessed, uh, blessed I've been. Uh, I first came to Chicago, as, as was mentioned, uh, and this campus almost uh, 40 years ago. I met my wife Susan here. Uh, we were married a few blocks away in Bond Chapel. Uh, it was the best decision I ever made. Uh, I'll let Susan speak for herself. <laughs> 
My uh, father-in-law, Dr. Richard Landau, who is here today, was a member of the medical faculty here for nearly 60 years. And so Susan uh, is a, a, a K through 12 lab schooler. She took a break for college and came back and got a master's degree in the business school. So our U of C uh, roots run very deep. Um, I came to the University of Chicago for three reasons. One is I knew it was a, uh, a world-class institution and that I would get a great education. Uh, the second is that it is uh, far enough from New York City that I knew my parents would never surprise me with a visit. <laughs> and uh, the third reason I came is that um, I knew Chicago was a great, boisterous, fascinating uh, political town, and that intrigued me. But as it turned out then, the University of Chicago uh, was deeply invested in the life of the mind, uh, which made for uh, a rich academic experience. But there weren't a lot of outlets uh, for a kid who was contemplating a life in politics. And it may be, Bob, that part of the reason was uh, for the lack of enthusiasm uh, then was people were still a little hinky about the whole political activism thing. Because three years earlier, the students had taken over the administration building. So maybe they thought that was to be discouraged. I don't know. Anyway, I, dig I digress here. I, um, so to sate um, my passion for politics and news, I began writing, writing for the Maroon, writing for the Hyde Park Herald, uh, stringing for Time Magazine and the Washington Post. And that led to a wonderful job at the Chicago Tribune, which led to a career in political consulting, which led to two incredible years in the White House, uh, which leads me to this moment. Um, Today, I've, I've come full circle. I have um, one important assignment to uh, complete before my can campaign days are done. Uh, but I'm champing at the bit for a year from now uh, when this Institute of Politics is open for business. This will not be an academic uh, institute. It would be hard to improve on the academics here. And as my old professors almost certainly would attest, I would be the last guy you would ask to try. Um, <laughs> No, think of this as, as an ROTC program for politics and public service. My goal is to bring great practitioners uh, to this campus on a quarterly basis, a group of fellows, each of whom will offer a series of seminars on politics and government, how it's done and how it's communicated from their own rich uh, experiences. Uh, I want to place as many students as we can in internships and campaigns and government agencies and newsrooms in all the vital places where uh, public life plays out. Uh, I want to make the University of Chicago a premier destination for prominent and provocative speakers, players on the public stage through programs such as the one we're going to experience today. And I, I do want to say, and I'll say it again when they're here, um, I'm particularly grateful to this panel uh, for coming today because we, we're offering them a, a kind of classic Chicago January day. And so um, they, they, they came nonetheless. Um, and I'm, I'm pleased that my old White House uh, uh, colleague, Austin Goolsby, uh, has agreed to serve as a faculty advisor uh, to this uh, institute. And I hope we can draw on the enormous talent on this campus to help enrich our programs. And through these activities and more, uh, I hope to encourage and nurture uh, in as many students as we can a passion for politics and public service, uh, whether they lean left, right, or center, Democrat, Republican, Green, or whatever. Uh, uh, in fact, we've begun to assemble a strong bipartisan uh, 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 board of uh, ad, uh, advisors because our mission transcends party. Uh, we want to set a good example uh, for these young people. I, I know it's easy to be cynical about politics today. Believe me, over a long career, um, I've had a bird's eye view of politics at its worst. Uh, but I've also seen it at its best. I've met some extraordinary uh, people on all sides who see that involvement in politics and public life is not a game. Uh, it's a cause. It's something to believe in. And here's the truth. Uh, whatever you care about, whether it's climate change or debt, human rights, or simply the right to be left alone, the decisions that are made in Washington and Springfield and state capitals and city halls uh, across the country and in foreign cap capitals, these decisions matter. Uh, they will impact on you. Uh, they will impact on your lives and the things you care about. And my message to, uh, to the students are he who are here today is do don't let others make those decisions for you. Uh, don't curse the outcome. Change the outcome. Uh, 
change it by getting in the arena, if not as a candidate, that is, and then as an advisor or a strategist uh, or a writer, you'll find that even with all its frustrations and sacrifices, and you can see my wife and my son Michael, who's here today, uh, about the sacrifice part. They know that very well. Um, despite all that, it's a vital, exciting, meaningful life. Um, and I hope through this institute you'll get a taste of that. Uh, and I also need your help to shape it. This is not uh, as much, um, uh, this is as much your deal as it is my deal. Uh, and your ideas and enthusiasms uh, will help make it work, and I hope will make it an enduring part of campus life here at the university. Uh, finally, let me say that not many people can trace a lifelong passion to an exact place or moment in time, but I can. Uh, it was October 27, uh, 1960, 10 days before the presidential election, and John F. Kennedy came to Stuyvesant Town uh, the housing development in New York City where I, and by the way, David Brooks uh, lived. And uh, the woman who took care of me when I was uh, a kid, who, uh, when my mother was at work, this wonderful African-American woman named uh, Jessie Berry took me out and put me on a mailbox so I could see. My sister Joan, who's here, uh, was there too, but she had a much better spot right by the platform. The big kids always got treated better. Uh, I, uh, and I remember 20th Street, which is a huge, those of you familiar with New York, it's a huge boulevard. And I remember it filling in uh, with people, uh, all of whom were transfixed by this charismatic young man talking about America and the future. And it all seemed so exciting and important to me. You know, I can't honestly say I remember what JFK said that day. I was five. Um, but through the wonders of Google, I've been able to retrieve his remarks. And what he said in part was, I'm not running on a platform that says if you elect me, things will be easy. He said, being an American citizen in the 1960s is a hazardous, is hazardous duty, a hazardous occupation, filled with challenge and peril, but also hope and opportunity, and we'll decide which path we take. Now, those words are as true today as they were uh, then, when uh, JFK heralded a new generation of leadership. Uh, after his tragic death, his family endowed an institute of politics at Harvard to help encourage new generations of leadership for generations to come. And their hope, uh, their vision, that, was such, uh, that, that such institutes would be replicated throughout the country uh, to encourage young Americans to seize the reins of the world in which they will live. Uh, I know that some of those leaders are in this room today. And I'm thrilled and privileged to have the opportunity to help encourage their passion here at my alma mater in my hometown. And now, uh, let me introduce one of those future leaders, and I want to make sure I get this right, Maher Kairan, right? I didn't want to mispronounce, especially in the International House. Um, <laughs> a third year political science major and vice president of the University of Chicago student government. And one of the students I met with, uh, I met with a, a group of student leaders a couple of weeks ago, and everybody was very enthusiastic, and then I realized uh, everyone but one was a senior and wouldn't be here when this institute uh, moves forward. But I have her commitment that she's going to play a big role in this institute. So I'm very excited about it and excited to introduce her. Thank you, Mr. Axelrod. And thank you for returning to the University of Chicago to lead this new institute. I think I speak for many students when I say that this initiative will provide essential opportunities for us as we consider careers in politics and public service. As a third year political science major, I am one of a multitude of students at the university who are interested in issues of law and public service. And I believe that this institute will provide the resources and expertise necessary to channel that passion into a meaningful career in the public sphere. This institute also taps into the deepest reasons why I, and many other students at this university chose the University of Chicago. This is a place that encourages an uncommon approach to big problems, a place where students are encouraged to disagree in a respectful way. The goal is to use our disagreements to find new solutions and formulate educated opinions on the most important issues of the day. This approach is especially valuable in the political realm. And I believe this institute and the prominent speakers that it will bring to our campus will facilitate the creation of a space where we can have those discussions 
and where we can explore the impact of our ideas. Judging from the number of UChicago students who join organizations like Teach for America and the Peace Corps every year, we can already see that the campus fosters a broad commitment to public service, one that I believe will gain more momentum as a result of this initiative. For these reasons, I'm excited about the Institute of Politics and the opportunities that it will provide. I'm excited to see all that this institute will bring to our campus and all that we students will make of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, for these remarks. I'd like to emphasize again how excited we are at the university and in particular at the Harris School uh, about David Axelrod and his new initiative. I was involved in some of the early discussions a few months ago and it seemed to me from the beginning something that really had to take place here at the University of Chicago and could not be allowed to go to any inferior institution in the neighborhood. <laughs> I'd also like to, to say how pleased I am that D David mentioned uh, uh, Mayor Richard M. Daly and his involvement, his involvement with the school and the university, and indeed also to round out the political spectrum, former Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson, who probably does not agree with uh, either of them on much. Uh, and we would like to bring in more people who can disagree with each other in order to, to, to reflect the, the reality at the university. The only word in Mayor's remarks that I didn't uh, quite find rang true was the word respectfully. <laughs> so I'm delighted that uh, the Institute of Politics is going to be here. I'd, I'd like to thank David for, for coming to us. Uh, and I would now like to, uh, to, to pass over to the next part of the program. Uh, Steve Klein, who's our supremo for microphones and media, uh, will guide this part of the activity from there. Thank you, Steve. If I don't create awful feedback. We have just a few moments for a couple of questions. A reminder that this is questions for the media on the news of the day. <clears throat> After the panel, there'll be an opportunity for questions for the panelists. So anybody want to take a quick stab at well, David, uh, regarding the news of the day, congratulations, uh, by the way. Regarding the news of the day, uh, what uh, uh, you may have seen that uh, there's been some developments regarding uh, the uh, relationship between former House Speaker Newt Gingrich and his, one of his ex-wives. And uh, then, uh, in addition, we have the uh, financial issues regarding Mr. Romney. Um, how does the president and the campaign plan to use that material going forward? Um. So about cynicism in politics. Let me, uh... Uh, I'm not, you know, honestly, Mike, I'm not going to address that uh, uh, today. I, 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 I don't know about um, uh, the details of that first story, and I, uh, I don't think it's been appropriate for me to, uh, to, to use this platform uh, to discuss uh, those issues. Uh, you know, I, um, um, I'm interested in uh, imparting to these young people the possibilities of involvement in politics and public life. Um, and those transcend these kinds of controversies uh, and they go to the kind of world we can create together. And uh, that, that's the focus I want to keep here. Um, and uh, we can meet elsewhere and uh, I can, um, uh, I can uh, debase the process there. And I won't ask you if you're going to scold George Stephanopoulos for releasing that today instead of holding it for the general. Um, can I ask you, the, 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 uh, I think it was Professor Markertek mentioned that uh, he wanted it at this institution, not some inferior institution. Had <laughs> you talked with other uh, schools about uh, Shami there? And is it, Chicago has this reputation, as you say, when you came here about the, the politics being rough and tumble. Do you see any sort of dichotomy between the the more cerebral reputation of the uh, University of Chicago versus the rough and tumble of Chicago politics? Well, um, yes, I, I, I did have this, uh, other discussions, um, but it was very clear to me that this was a, a, a great match. There are a lot of great institutions here, and I'm not, um, I've only been uh, a part of this for a few hours, so I haven't yet 
uh, honed my competitive instincts here, and I won't denigrate any other institution. But, um, uh, but this is a great uh, place, and my, my interest is in, it's less about that than are there young, smart, well-motivated uh, uh, students who have a hunger to uh, become involved in public life and public service and politics. And I, you know, maybe the most meaningful discussions that I had, as persuasive as, as these folks have been, has, uh, was with the students. And uh, you know, I, what I heard from them was, we want an outlet. We, we have a thirst to learn about uh, uh, this through the eyes of people who have done it. Uh, we want to see uh, provocative uh, speakers come to the campus on a regular basis. We want to be part, we want to be engaged. And that was what was persuasive to me. And I, I think this, you know, this student body is uh, as promising as any student body you'll find in the country. And I think if I can help persuade a few of them to take a look at public service and politics, then I'll be making a contribution that I can be proud of. When you, when you think David Axelrod, you think Barack Obama, Chicago, the, the dark blue territory of Hyde Park. Uh, are you gonna be able to uh, recruit future Republicans, future uh, students from other parties? I hope so, and you know, one of the things, I, I, meant, I sort of hit, uh, hinted at this in my statement, but I, I wanna set a good example uh, for these young, so some of my best friends truly are Republicans. Uh, <laughs> Alex Castellanos, who's, uh, who's on the panel today, is one of them. Uh, I respect people who care deeply about this country, who are passionate about the process, who are willing to be, as Teddy Roosevelt says, in the arena. Whether, whatever their point of view, and um, I, I, I share a passion with them. It, one of the nice things that happened today is that uh, I got uh, several emails from some prominent Republicans who said, any way we can help. Uh, now, it may be associated with the fact that I said I was leaving the business, and they want to make sure that I keep my word. But I think that, uh, but in the main, I think they were very sincere. Um, and I'm going to take advantage of that. Uh, I, um, I am very confident. Everyone I've spoken to on both sides and, and in, in, in journalism and so on, they've all expressed an interest to come, not because of me, but because they also see this as an important thing to do. And they, they love Chicago. They, they know of the University of Chicago. They know the kind of students that they'll uh, be interacting with here. So I have every confidence that uh, we'll bring good Republicans to campus, good Democrats to campus, people who are not affiliated to campus, and uh, everyone, whatever their political persuasion, who has an interest in politics will find it an enriching experience. I hope you'll all join me in expressing our warm gratitude to Mr. Axelrod and all Thank of our you. speakers. Thank you so Thank you. much.